What's up guys, Backyard Scientist here, and today we're going to be pouring these seven metals into this 15 gallon fish tank. We have tin, pewter, bismuth, lead, zinc, aluminum, and thermite. You're going to want to check this out. So the reason I'm making this video is because every time I post a video involving molten metal, somebody in the comments is going to cry out and say, you're going to die a horrible tragic death and it's going to be painful the whole time you're dying. That's not really exactly true and it pretty much comes down to how hot the metal is when it comes into contact with water. First we're going to start off with pewter and that has the lowest melting point of the group, only about 350 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going to go ahead and melt that and pour it into the water. So our first metal is pewter, and this is just some leftover from my other video, casting a pewter sword. Now pewter is really easy to melt and I can just melt it on an electric stove. You can see the pewter explodes the instant that it touches water. That's because there's no light and frost effect here. The pewter is in direct contact with the water, and because the pewter is so much higher than water's boiling point, little steam explosions occur. Now, now I'm going to make this quick because tin, bismuth, and lead all pretty much do the exact same thing. When you pour lead into water, it doesn't explode, but it does form a hard shell on the outside and creates these big, long metal spears. Tin, well, tin turns into popcorn the second it touches water, and bismuth, well, just turns into dust the second that it contacted water. Now, I pulled all the metals out of water, and we can compare them side by side. With tin and pewter, there's definitely evidence of little steam explosions happening on the surface. You can see that in bismuth, too, but there's also little metal spears that are starting to form. With lead, there's nothing but metal spears forming, which means that it's getting hot enough to just slide right through water. Alright, next up is zinc, and zinc has a melting point of almost 800 degrees, and zinc is the main component in new pennies. When I was trying to melt zinc, I noticed it started sweating. I've never seen anything like that happen on metal before. Pretty cool. Alright, this is where things start to get interesting. You can tell zinc is almost entirely unaffected by water. It just glides right through looking like little metal raindrops. Alright, let's grab some of the zinc from the bottom of the fish tank and check it out. The way that the zinc fell through the water and ended up producing some really cool organic yet still metal blobs. Alright, next up we have aluminum. Commonly mispronounced as aluminium, which is wrong, aluminum has a melting point of over 1200 degrees F. F stands for freedom. Go Team America! What's really cool about aluminum is not only the way that it snakes through the water, but the fact that it remains molten all the way to the bottom of the fish tank. That lets me create some kind of drippy metal art sculptures. The aluminum is so hot, it instantly vaporizes the water it's next to, so it falls down in a shimmering cloud of water vapor, protecting itself from direct contact with the water. Here's two of the aluminum sculptures I made. Each one of them is really unique, and they weigh about a pound each. This was the first one I made, and this one is the second one I made. I poured it slower so the sculpture is a little bit taller. Alright guys, this is the moment you've been waiting for. We got about a pound of thermite sitting directly over the fish tank. Let's get started. If you've never seen it before, thermite is a mixture of finely powdered rust and aluminum. It burns at over 4,000 degrees and produces molten iron. You need a small strip of magnesium to ignite it, and once it gets started, there is no way to stop it. Not even water can quench the fire put out by thermite. Now that was really cool. Now let's check out what we got from the bottom of that. We got some chunks of iron as well as some little iron balls. 
we have some little aluminum oxide balls. This is kind of just the leftover from the reaction, and you can see that there's still a little bit of iron trapped in there. And here's the slag. This is what was left in the flower pot, and you can tell that there's still a lot of iron in there too as well. But anyway, guys, that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I mean, if thermite can't figure out a way to kill you, then it's probably fine to pour aluminum or whatever metals in water. I'll see you guys next time. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've got any comments, leave them below. And if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. I'm always open to ideas, and I will see you next time. P.S. Subscribe. Way to keep cool in the shade and way to keep my shots constant because the light is changing. It's windy.